One faith from God Christianity is rebooting. If you are a part of the great spiritual awakening, if you can now realize that denominationalism is a subjective truth of men as opposed to the objective truth from God, 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 through 11. If you realize that the doctrine that children are born in sin is subjective truth taught by evil men so they can control, abuse, and manipulate children, then you are ready for the perfect law of liberty that will free you from every wind of the doctrine of men. Romans chapter 3. What advantage then has the Jew? Or what profit is of circumcision? Well, much in every way. They were the first ones entrusted with the oracles of God. You know, they were given the first 24 readings of God's word. But what if some were without faith? What if they refused to sanctify the word of God and gave to the world their Bible with apocryphal books and the Septuagint? Or what if the Catholic Church did the same thing in 340 A.D.? Shall their lack of faith make of none effect the faithfulness of God? God forbid. Yes, let God be found true, objective truth from God, and every man a liar, subjective truth from men. As it is written, Psalms 51, verse 4, that you might be justified in your words and might prevail when you come to judgment. But if by our unrighteousness, God's righteousness does establish, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who is inflicting the wrath? I speak after the manner of men. Or is God wrong for allowing humanity to suffer through Gnosticism? God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? But if the truth of God through my lie abounded into his glory, why am I also still judged as a sinner? Okay, Paul was imperfect. That proved that we need a perfect Savior. The same is true about every single one of us on this earth. We need a perfect Savior. Or that's the reason why we will not still be judged as sinners. And why not? As we are slanderously reported and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come. Whose condemnation is just? What then? Are we that is the Gnostic Jews better than they, the Gnostic Romans? No, in no wise. For we before laid to their charge, both of the Jews and of the Greeks, that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. This describes all Gnostics since the Garden of Eden. Since Eve wouldn't obey God, Adam and Eve wouldn't obey God. They were cast out of the garden. And so men were under Gnosticism for 6,000 years. In spiritual dark ages, they didn't realize this. But we've been in the spiritual dark ages for 6,000 years. There's none righteous, no, not one. Now, there were some accounted as righteous, of course. There have always been righteous people on this earth even through the 6,000 years of Gnosticism, are men and women counted as righteous, or those who are counted as righteous. There is none that seeks after God. When we were in the spiritual dark ages, we didn't know about the power, glory, and majesty of, of God. They all have turned aside. They all are together become unprofitable. Some are counted righteous, but we're unprofitable. Of course, we're still unprofitable servants, even, even as Christians. There's none that does good, no, not so much as one. Everyone, I mean, everyone was a denominationalist for the past 1600. There was a Christian that tried to do right or tried to be a Christian or tried to do right. We were all denominationalists. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they have used deceit. We claim to speak for God because we were in ignorance. God wanted us to so we could prove that we need a perfect Savior. But only the Spirit of God in the perfect law of liberty knows the mind of God. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 11. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the ways of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Well, this is true of both righteous and evil Gnostics. The doctrine of men is evil and we may not be held accountable for it but this is certainly especially true for evil gnostics in the world today now we know that whatsoever things the law says that is the perfect law of liberty it speaks to them under the law we didn't have the perfect law of liberty that every mouth may be stopped our mouths will be stopped when we have the perfect law of liberty in the second age of the kingdom 
and all the world may be brought under the judgment of God. And it will happen in about 40 years. Because by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now apart from the law, a righteousness of God has been made, has been manifest. But now apart from the law, a righteousness of God has been manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ and to all them that believe, for there is no distinction for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all were apostate. Think that's Romans 2, 3. Turned away from all of God's word. We didn't have the perfect law of liberty. Being justified freely, we didn't have the perfect law of liberty and none of us were Christian because the Lord is jealous of his name. He's not going to share his name with men of different faiths or faith systems from men. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus who God sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to show his righteousness because of the passing over of the sins done before in the forbearance of God, Acts 17, 30. For the showing, I say, of his righteousness at this present season, that he might himself be just and the justifier of him that has faith in Jesus. Where then is the glory? It is excluded. By what manner of law? Of meritorious works? Is the Jew better than the Gentile because of his meritorious work? No. It's a law of faith that we all can have now. The perfect law of liberty, at least in part. We reckon, therefore, that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of law. The law of Moses. Well, now, what was wrong with the law of Moses? Moses, again, the imperfections of men show that we need a perfect Savior. Or is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles also? Yes, of the Gentiles also. If so be that God is one, and he shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith, do we then make the law of none effect through faith? God forbid. We establish the law. 